Hi, I want you to imagine that I ask you this question. What is the most fascinating creature on planet Earth? Maybe you'd say it's those creatures that live at the depth of the ocean. Maybe you'd think about the creatures that are so beautiful that crawl around the Amazon floor. But I put it to you that the most fascinating creature on planet Earth is human beings. And if you've ever managed them or led them, you know that that's true because pretty quickly that fascination can turn to ah, frustration. So how do we get the most out of our people? Well, according to a global poll conducted by uh, Gallup, of over 1 billion full-time workers in the world today, only 15% of those people are fully engaged. That means that a mind-blowing 85% of people are unhappy or downright miserable in their work. Why is that statistic so high? Well, in this video training, I'm going to do my best to give you the two main reasons why that's so high. And I'm going to give you the specific steps you can use, the top 10 steps you can use to turn it around so that your people are not only engaged, but dynamically engaged. Now, the truth of the matter is that most leading organizations recognize the value of employee happiness and well-being. So why are people so unhappy at work? Well, there's actually a number of reasons. As I said, we're going to look at the top two. The top two are these. The first one, I don't think it's going to come as any surprise, is crappy bosses. You guessed it. A good relationship between a manager, a leader, and their team, well, it goes a heck of a long way to shaping that team into a well-oiled machine that's productive, that hits targets, and most important of all, that gets along well. Gallup Research found what they called managers from hell are costing billions. These managers from hell are the reason that your top employees hate their jobs. Gallup research showed that these managers are responsible for costing the U.S. economy an estimated, wait for it, $450 to $550 billion annually. Now, the second reason that people dislike their work is their colleagues. Now, while it's true that you're not going to like any, everybody or every, anybody all the time, sometimes it's just people you're never going to get along with. But if you don't like the people you work with, then you likely won't enjoy the time you're spending at work and you won't want to be there. So I want to dive into the top 10 ways that you can get the absolute most out of your people. And as you can probably guess, it's going to address those top two reasons that people are not happy in their work. So the first one, the number one reason and the number one way you can get your people fully engaged and get the most out of them is simple. Be a better leader. People don't quit jobs. They quit bosses. The research is in. To borrow a line from Seinfeld, it's not them. It's you. The bottom line is this. Soft skills are the new hard bottom line. So you, in order to be a better leader, have got to practice being brave enough to be honest, to be present, to be open and transparent and vulnerable. These are powerful bonding mechanisms. In fact, the research shows that the more open and vulnerable you are, the more people are connected to you, bonded to you, the more the neurons in the brain, the mirror neurons fire, the deeper the connection is, and the more that people want to give you their very best. The second way to get the best, the most out of your people addresses the second problem, the second reason that people are disengaged, and that is create a culture of community. The research has shown that millennials who are today 40 years old at the oldest in 2020 want to work with friends. They want to be in a community. They want to understand that. So you've got to create a culture of community where people want to be, where they want to spend their time. They will stay around longer and they'll do more to be part of that. The third way to get the most out of your people, and this is going to surprise you, is be a champion for rebels. I love that. Rebels are the key to your creativity and innovation. If you discourage rebellion, then you're going to crush and squash that, that creativity. You want to bring it up. You want to nurture it. So you've got to be a champion for rebels who are going to look at the problems in a different way. Number four, stay curious. Give your employees a voice and a vote in whatever's going on. What does that mean? It means 
get personal. Set aside 30 minutes to get to know each one of the members of your team at a very personal level. Don't just ask them about their career goals. We've all done that. That's table stakes. You got to find out what motivates them outside of work. You got to find out what their hobbies are. You got to be willing to ask questions. Things like, what's the greatest lesson you learned from your parents? Or who was your childhood hero and why? Who was your best friend when you were a kid and why? Number five, autonomy. Think about this statement for a minute. I really appreciate how my boss micromanages every aspect of my job. Said no one ever. <laughs> you need structure in an organization, obviously. But structure is very different than constraints. Constraints strip away autonomy. Structure doesn't. Structure is what I lean on to give me the strength to move forward. Constraints are like a prison. So this, of course, works hand in hand with championing rebels. You want to give people the structure, but not the constraints. Number six, mastery. Now, mastery is so vitally important because it's a human need. But I want to put it to you in a context of which you can understand it. And that's this. Don't expect people to learn at the speed you do. In fact, what we know is that today's uh, workforce will learn way faster than, than the previous generations. Research back in the 90s into how fast can somebody learn to be a fighter pilot was two and a half years. Two and a half years in the 1990s. By the early 2000s, that had sped up to a couple of months. Today, it's a few weeks. People learn faster than ever. We want mastery. Now, a lot of leaders will complain that people want to grow through things faster. They want to climb the corporate ladder faster. No, they want mastery. And they don't want you to restrict how they get to it. They're willing to go away and learn if you will create the environment for them to have mastery. Number seven. This is a great one. Again, it's a human need. And that is significance. You have got to applaud. You've got to recognize. You've got to validate your people. A study conducted at Princeton demonstrated that money doesn't contribute to overall happiness and motivation once we reach a certain level. That level is about $75,000 US. That's when it just drains out. People stop being motivated. They stop being really happy. So you've got to train your people to celebrate their own success and celebrate the success of the people around them. You've got to find a way to validate, recognize, and and applaud the people around you in the way they want. If you've ever been in a primary relationship, there's a pretty good chance at some point in time you were in love with somebody who you maybe had a way of letting them know you were in love with them and they turned to you and said, I don't feel very loved. Maybe you said, I love you all the time. And they turned to you one day and said, I don't feel very loved. And you were like confused. The problem was you were giving them the significance in the way you might have wanted it, but not in the way that they might have wanted it. It's exactly the same with your employees. You've got to give them the significance, the applause and the recognition and the validation in the way that they want it. Number eight, create an entrepreneurial environment. We're surrounded by entrepreneurs. Every ad across social media is about being an entrepreneur. And people still want to work in jobs. They want that security, of course. But they love the idea of being an entrepreneur. So create an entrepreneurial environment. That means a place where they can be entrepreneurial inside of your organization. Many of the very successful organizations create things that called skunk works, where everybody or a small group of people will go away and work on a project and come up with something. You can do that in all kinds of ways. And one of the things around that is this. I want to encourage you to get your people ready to leave. You go, what? I'm supposed to be getting the best out of my people and I'm training them to leave? Yeah. You see, here's the thing. When I entered the workforce, I was asked, what do you want to do as a career? And that was a 20 to 40 year question. For millennials, who I said are 40 years old today, a career is four years. Four years. That is 10 times faster. So you want to keep them for a career if you possibly can, because the average millennial's work uh, lifespan is only 1.2 years in a job. 
You want them to be with you for a career. And if you actually create the environment where they can learn fast and create mastery, they may change careers inside of your organization. We had somebody who was with us for six years who was a millennial because we constantly challenged that person to have new levels of mastery and they built different entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial skills inside of the organization. That's why they moved on. So you've got to give that person the room to grow. And by the way, one of the reason, one of the other things that you can do is one of the ways you can get the most out of people is discover if they're the wrong person for what it is you need. Sometimes the, the way to get the most out of somebody is to let that person go. Number nine, create rotating collaboration pods. Now this is a bit more into what I was saying a few minutes ago. Collaboration pods are where you take six or eight people out of silos, out of the different departments. So we know that in organizations, often marketing doesn't talk to sales, sales doesn't talk to accounting, you know, or whatever it is. We want to break that open. So what you need to do is create these collaboration pods. This is a powerful way to get people engaged and it's a powerful way to get the most out of them. So you create these pods of six or eight people from different departments and you give them a challenge to work with. They can work with it on their own time. They can work with it in special chunks of time inside of the office hours or whatever it is, but they're going to work on a particular challenge or a question. By doing this, you break down silos, you bring people together, you create a community culture and you bring up that innovation again. So create rotating collaborative pods. Number 10, focus on their why. Find out what gets your people out of bed in the morning. You may think you know, like it's money, but it's not. You've got to be willing to find out what gets your people out of bed in the morning. For some people, it's their family. For some people, it's their kids. For some people, it's the opportunity to create. There's a million reasons why, but you've got to actually take the time to focus on their why. That way, whatever you're giving them, you frame it inside of their why. If they're gener if they're their why is creativity and there's a problem to be solved or an outcome to get to, then you ask them, how can you creatively get to this? If their motivation is family, you say, okay, this is the outcome. If you do this, how will this impact your family? You've got to frame things in their why. That's how you get the most out of people. That's the top 10 ways to get the most out of your people. However, I have a bonus one for you. My number 11. It's the, it's the foundation of all the work we do in my organization. And that is be meaning driven. Because unified meaning, or as we like to call it, finding your dragon fire, is the one single monolithic difference between mediocrity and greatness in individuals and in companies. So I trust that you found this valuable. And if you would like to know more about what it is that we offer, there is a ton of resources throughout the site, dovebaron.com. However, if you're genuinely committed to knocking out that number one, which is how to be a better leader of yourself, of others, of your family, of your community, then we've got a ton of resources for you. And what's more is on a regular basis, I offer two hour live video trainings that you can register for right here. Somewhere on here anyway, you look around, you'll find it. Okay, till next time. This is Dov Barron saying, stay curious, my friend, stay curious about how you can get the most out of your people by keeping them fully engaged and being a better leader. I'm out.